Now, speaking of some heat, this is a Medicare for All opinion piece that we are probably going to have a fun time uh, dissecting because it's uh, pretty bad. This is pretty bad. So uh, here we go. Medicare for All, Bernie Sanders' political pipe dream. Okay. Now, here's something interesting. Notice this says the editorial board. Now, look, I know that different times there are opinion pieces that are written by an editorial board. So I'm not trying to get too conspiratorial here. I know that happens regularly. But it's very interesting right off the bat that this particular piece is written by an editorial board. It It's almost like they knew people ain't going to like this. It's almost like they knew that they were writing bullshit, that they were writing fluff, um, and it was something that a lot of people were not going to take kindly to. So right off the bat, they're like, well, we're just going to do this as a staff so people don't even know where to direct their comments. It's interesting. All right, so Bernie Care proposal, what are they doing right there? What are they doing right there? They're trying to make it about the individual. This is an attempt to just stigmatize people and divide people further. They're calling it Bernie Care, not what it actually is. Just like when they tried to sell us Romney Care, they called it Obamacare. They called it Obamacare for a number of reasons. The people that hated Obama, they wanted them to hate Obamacare. The people who liked Obama, they wanted them to love Obamacare, even though it was just Mitt Romney's health care plan. And it was actually called the Affordable Care Act. That's what it was called. So now they're trying to say Medicare for all is Bernie Care. As if Bernie came up with this uh, health care idea that most of the industrialized world already uses. Nearly every industrialized country has a single payer style health care system or something very adjacent to it. Pretty much every other industrialized nation except for ours. And they're trying to call it Bernie Care. They're trying to make it out like, oh, this is just Bernie's fantasy idea that he came up with. Crazy Bernie. Now you're channeling Donald Trump. Good job, USA Today. Good job. All right. Here we go. So in the 1990s, Democrats offered up a health care overhaul that was big and complex and would have affected blah, blah, blah. The plan died in Congress. Um... Largely because of opposition from people who were reasonably satisfied with the status quo and didn't want to blow up the system. Uh, by this, they mean the donors. By this, they mean the donors. People have been screaming about universal health care for years in this country. For years. It has been a debate topic in high schools and colleges for years. My dad told me he, he did a debate for universal health care in the 60s. It's been a conversation in this country for years. So when they say, oh, everybody was just fine about the status quo. No, they, they mean the donors. All right, so let's go on. A decade and a half later, Democrats would try again, this time with a plan. Okay, so now they're talking about the Affordable Care Act. That plan, formerly known as the Affordable Care Act, and informally as Obamacare, passed because Democrats briefly held a filibuster proof in the Senate. Um... And even though it drew heavily from a conservative proposal in the 1990s, Republicans have made repealing it a priority ever since. And once again, that's because of the donors. Because of the donors, we didn't get a public option. Because of the donors, we got Romney Care. And now we're dealing with the effects of that. Um, all right, so... The obvious lesson here is that even modest healthcare changes are a struggle to get and to retain. Yeah, but you don't really say why. You don't really say why. They don't really tell you why. They don't tell you that the reason is because of donor control over our politics. Because of money and politics, we can't get this stuff through. They make it out like these. the struggle that's been happening on the electoral level is because of public opinion. It's not. It's because of donor control. It's because of money and politics. It's because of big pharma. It's because of the insurance companies. It's because of everything except public opinion. Public opinion is just nil. So instead of an opinion piece on how public opinion is neglected from the healthcare conversation, they instead antagonize somebody who's trying to break the wheel and actually have a system that'll get everybody healthcare. And that's why there's not an actual journalist on uh, this article. There's not one name attached to this article because uh, USA Today knew that this article was so shitty that they didn't want one name to be attached to it because they knew all the hate mail that person would likely to get.
would be likely to get. So they were like, our entire board will take credit for this piece of shit article. And this is journalism. This is journalism. When people tell me I'm not a journalist, my response is always, thank God. And, you know, that's, there's great journalists out there. Um, there are fantastic journalists out there in this country uh, and all around the world. But um, it's not a group I want to be part of. I'm not a journalist. I never want to be a journalist. I never have been. I never will be. I'm a comedian. That's all I've ever wanted to be. That's all I ever will be. But, all right, so let's see what else there is to this uh, bullshit propaganda fluff piece. Sanders' plan, dub Medicare for All, would eliminate private insurers and have all Americans covered through Medicare. It would be far more generous than the current plans, including dental, vision, and mental health, among other things, and would be financed largely by taxes on the wealthy. Would it be an improvement? Hypothetically, yes. Yeah, would it be an improvement? Would it be an improvement? There are millions of people who don't have health care in this country. About 45,000 people die every year in the United States, the richest country in the world, because of lack of health care coverage. Here's a plan that would cover everybody and would be more generous than plans in other countries even. Would this be an improvement? Gee, I don't know. What the? Ah! Hypothetically. <laughs> this is why there's not one name attached to this article. Not one name is attached to this article. They wouldn't do that. They knew this is such a piece of garbage opinion piece that a comedian's going to have time, fun dissecting it on his streaming viewer curated news show. That's on it. Articles like this, that is the only positive purpose they serve. The only positive purpose they serve is shows like this. A fucking comedian who live streams from his apartment with a viewer curated streaming news show where people tweet article ideas and we talk about it together can be like, what a piece of garbage is this? And we can all laugh about it because if we don't, we would all go insane. To paraphrase Jimmy Buffett. We'd all go nuts because we would see shit like this and we'd be like, eh, people take this seriously. Not everybody takes this seriously. Some of us don't. Fortunately, we get to gather together. Holy shit. This, I bumped the microphone. Lucy, up, oh, she looked. Come on, come over here. You should come, come hang out. Ah, oh, she might be. She's standing up. She's like, you don't fucking tell me what to do. What do you, you think I'm a dog? You, you think you can tell me to come and I'll come? What, what the f what do you think this is? Do I look like a canine? Do I, do I? That might be what she's thinking. Why, why are you hating on dogs? Why, I love dogs too. I, I love cats. I love dogs too. I love animals. I'm an animal person. Why are you hating on dogs? That's not for you. Because it's in my nature. All right? Because that's what, I am conditioned to not be a fan of them. You know, there, there have been times where dogs wanted your friendship. You weren't having it. Damn right I wasn't having it. And they should be grateful I even let them in my presence for more than two seconds before hissing. All right, Lucy. All right. Not, don't wake you up from a nap. I get it. She already laid back down. She's sleeping. If this is your first time tuning in, by the way, I'm referring to my cat who's sleeping on the couch. And they were, they were like, is he talking to a person? All right. Anyway, um, getting back to this horrible article. Uh, <laughs> hypothetically, it might be an improvement. We don't know. All right, so the current system is usually expensive for individuals and company, generates mountains of paperwork, and keeps people tied to their job for fear of losing employer-subsidized uh, coverage. But we got to stick with it. We got to stick with this horrible structure. We're the richest country in the world. Millions don't have health insurance. Costs are skyrocketing and continue to. We pay more and get less than every other industrialized nation in the country. But we got to stick with this. We got to stick with it. Why do we have to stick with it? Well, let's see their mess mental gymnastics there. Because I think this is the same bullshit that they've been selling to us for years. Um, but Sanders' plan has intrinsic drawbacks. Most notably, it's soak the rich approach and its lack of cost controls such as copays. What stands out is the, other in the utter impracticality of getting from where things stand today to what he proposes. Okay, so... Every study, even those funded by the Koch brothers, indicates that Bernie Sanders' plans actually saves us money. It's a cheaper plan, and it covers everybody. 
So what intrinsic costs are they referring to? It can't be the cost because it costs less. What intrinsic things are they referring to? Well, let's see. All right, so there, there's some impracticality. Okay, in an era of intense political pol polarization, no measure that disrupts insurance for more than 100 million Americans, most of them reasonably satisfied with their coverage, would get through Congress. Okay, so remember, remember that Fox News town hall where Bernie said, uh, where no, 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 it actually wasn't Bernie. It was the moderator, and they said, "Who here is happy with their current health insurance?" A couple people raised their hands. And then they said, who would want to switch to Bernie Sanders' Medicare for All system? Every hand went up, including the people who were actually satisfied with their coverage. They were like, yeah, we'd be willing to switch to that. It'd be cheaper. Remember when that happened? A lot of Republicans favor Medicare for All now. About 70% of all adults want Medicare for All now. And when they do these polls that say uh, most people don't really want single payer, it's because they don't have single payer as an option on the polls. So they cook the results, basically. Or they, they manipulate the data, actually. That's the, the right terminology for something like that. They manipulate the data to get the results they want. Hey, we want people to not want single payer, so we're going to have it as not an option on this poll and then use this poll as an indicator that people don't want single payer. Ron, that sounds really dishonest. Yeah, it is. How do they get away with that? Because nobody actually reads the fine print of how their polls were conducted. That's why. Um, all right. So everything they've said in this has been easily debunked, has been debunked multiple times, and is just fluff and bullshit. Everything they've said so far. Just not even, like, like there's not a, it's not like, oh, this is a different perspective. Like, these are just, these are just false lies. These are just, most people ha are happy with their country. That's not true. Uh, most people are against this. That's not true. It has support all across the political aisles. Um, all right. So what else would it disrupt? Democrats would do better by focusing on more a more gradual game plan. Oh God, several proposals would allow some Americans not to buy into Medicare. None of these incremental approaches lends itself to bumper stickers, placards, or campaign rallying cries. None is without consequences and potential pitfalls. Even so, they represent more practical approaches than lurching from the present into Bernie Sanders' idea of what our national healthcare system ought to look like. It's not Bernie Sanders' idea. It's not. I supported single payer uh, about 10 years. Wait, no, longer than that. Over a decade long, about 11 years before I even knew who Bernie Sanders was. I supported single payer. That's why in 2008, I supported Dennis Kucinich. I'm not some anomaly. I'm not some unique person. Single payer is not Bernie Sanders' idea. It's not some, some healthcare vision he has that no one else has had before. It's actually the most common healthcare plan in the industrialized world. Single payer or something close to it is the most common healthcare plan in the industrialized world. It's not Bernie Sanders' idea. And this incremental approach, again, 45,000 people die a year from lack of health care. And uh, there is nothing increment or there's nothing pragmatic about an incremental solution to a catastrophic problem. And this is the line we were sold in 2008. We need a baby step to get to single payer. We need a baby step to get to single payer. Well, we had our baby step. It was the Affordable Care Act. The baby step's over. It is time for single payer and we cannot settle for anything less. We had our baby step. So when you see, oh, we need more incrementalism. We're, we're going to have an incremental step where if you're under 65, you can buy into Medicare. And uh, if you're sick right away, you can go under this bridge and uh, there's going to be a troll there and you got to solve a riddle. And if you solve the riddle, uh, you'll get uh, you'll get health care. Uh, and so that'll cut back on costs. But it'll, no, the incrementalism is over. It's over. And if you want to make the argument about jobs, oh, so a lot of these people that are working for these horrible insurance companies, these price gouging, horrible insurance companies, they can go work for the new system where the government does all the bookkeeping and they can work for a nonprofit system where they'll probably be treated a lot better. This new system will come with jobs. So this opinion piece was awful. How bad was it? They, they wouldn't put anyone's name on it. Good job, USA Today. This was garbage. This was complete and utter garbage. The fact that this was published by a major outlet um, with a straight face. I mean, th this is so, th this, these, are, these talking points are so tired. They are over a decade old. 
and they are easily debunkable. They are so easily debunkable that we just did it on the fly. Just, just on the fly. This was my first time looking at this dumb opinion piece. And everything they said in I mean, I skimmed it briefly before the show. Because someone tweeted this at me. And I looked at it briefly before the show. Just looked at the first paragraph and was like, oh, this is going to be fun. That's it. But in real time, this was that easy to dissect. Because every talking point they use. So, I mean, just, even the, just show them the Fox News Town Hall video. Debunked right there. Unbelievable. Get your news on with Ron. Don't you want to know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. Get your news on with Ron. Don't you want to know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can tweet me an article at Ron Placone. We'll go through it together and make it our own. Get your 